In the summer of 2022, my girlfriend and I spent two weeks traveling the west coast of Ireland. The riding experience was quite different from all the ones I've had so far and it actually managed to permanently change my own way of traveling by motorcycle. It's taught me rather obvious yet significant life lessons. And most importantly, this memorable journey enabled me to learn something very crucial about myself. Thank you, sir. This country has managed to truly touch my soul and for a while I even considered permanently moving to the Emerald Isle. You will understand why towards the end of my video. It's connected to something that most Ireland visitors get to experience several times a day and it has nothing to do with motorcycles. Don't you worry though, the rest of the story is very much bike related. Only the beginning and the end are a bit more, well, personal. Very personal actually, as you are about to find out now. This whole story starts with me wanting to become intimate with a woman. I kid you not. It was one of my few desperate attempts to gain some self-confidence that brought me to Dublin, Ireland for the first time back in 2018. I certainly won't go into too much detail here, but let's just say... It didn't end well. But it was just this unpleasant turn of events that was responsible for me deciding to leave the capital on my last day on the island. As I was standing on top of Dolky Hill, taking some sad and cringy self-portraits, I took a look around and noticed the soft hills towards the south. And that was the exact moment in which I decided I should not let a terrible dating experience spoil a whole country for me. I promised myself that I would return someday to explore the island on two wheels. And this idea actually became my first ever motorcycle dream. So. I started saving up money and four and a half years later I was finally able to turn my fantasy into reality. Which was even better than whatever I imagined back then. Because nowadays I even have a girlfriend, her name is Alessia, to bring along. Can you please put it back onto my camera to protect the lenses? Okay. One. <laughs> this is a holiday and I'm a bit of a German. It's not supposed to be fun. <laughs> Our plan was to ride the west coast, from south to north basically, loosely following the wild Atlantic way, which Ireland claims to be the longest defined coastal touring route. It consists of stretches of road, some very close to the coast, others not so much, that are connected with each other by signs like these. Oh, yeah. Creating this 2,500 kilometers long route seems like a very nice idea to me. As long as you're following those waves, you can be sure to get to see something pretty sooner or later. To find a bike for this mission, I did what I always do. I asked Google for the best rated rental place. And this is how I found Celtic Rider. A very likable and family owned business located near the capital. They have a very decent selection of bikes and something way more exotic. Yep, we did indeed also try that. But this particularly interesting experience I'll save for another video. Let's focus on two wheels for this one here. I was really glad I brought some tasty souvenir from Austria because Paul, who founded, owns and runs the place together with his wife, turned out to be a proper nice person. 
He even insisted on cleaning my mildly dirty helmet visor for me while Olesia and I were busy picking our climb gear for the journey. This gear is quite the fancy stuff, very expensive, but also very good and very important to have, as we later found out, being faced with the lovely Irish weather. I picked the big GS from Paul's fleet and, as I'm going to explain later, fortunately that turned out to be the perfect choice for the job. Since I was on a mission to capture our experience, I had to bring a ton of filming equipment with me. Six cameras plus batteries and charges, to be precise. GoPro 1, GoPro 2, 360 GoPro, photo camera, drone and smartphone. I've never ridden a bike with that much luggage attached to it before. So, needless to say, the first few meters of riding were lacking grace a bit. Oh, that's heavy. I didn't even have time to worry about that though, since I was immediately faced with a big fear of mine, riding on the wrong side of the road. Yeah. It is the wrong one. Back home we stick to the right and it's called right for a reason. Right is the opposite of wrong. Fortunately, Paul took the time to lead us for a few minutes in the beginning so we could get used to it. Apart from some sketchy scooter kilometers I did in Thailand back in the day, this was my first time riding on the left. And that was lesson number one for me. As usual, all my worries and fears before the trip turned out to be completely meaningless once I was there. There is no point in becoming anxious before you get the chance to actually tackle whatever you're afraid of. At least when it's about such minor things like changing sides on the road. While at first I had to read out the small reminder attached to the windscreen out loud, especially when approaching intersections. Stay left, look right, stay left, look right, I'm looking right. I very quickly got used to it all. It started to feel natural after something like three hours already. Not once did I mess things up during the 16 days of our journey. Weirdly enough, it took me way more time and mental work to get used to the right side again once I was back home in Austria. The weather, however, was something that was not quite as easy to deal with. While this year was supposed to be a holiday, riding bikes sometimes is part of my job as well. Which means that quite often I can't choose when to ride. So you could say I'm used to sitting on a motorcycle in crap weather. And that's the reason why in my spare time I usually decide not to head out in anything less than perfect conditions. It's also why I usually much prefer to travel around the southern parts of Europe, like Spain and Italy. So being faced with a fair share of motorcycle unfriendly weather conditions in my spare time was quite new to me. The Irish told me, if you want the weather to change, you just have to wait for five minutes. And that is one of the most precise sayings I've ever heard. Sometimes it felt like we'd witnessed 10 different weather situations in a single day. It was fairly common to go from this to this in less than 30 minutes. By the way, there is also no point in trusting the weather forecasts. More often than not, they were useless. Nice. However, it was not the riding in the wet itself that bothered me. After all, Olesia and I were equipped with excellent gear, which indeed was very waterproof. Also, my rain confidence very quickly grew with every kilometer we did. Since I wasn't in a hurry, my speed on dry and wet roads was more or less the same. Oh, and by the way, Irish roads are not the most fun to ride anyway, regardless of the conditions. It's the weirdest twisties I've ever rode. But I will get back to that hot topic a bit later. My visor is still wet, and now there is the sun. <laughs> Yeah, the Irish weather is mocking me. Yeah. 
I was heartbroken every time we passed a supposedly beautiful spot that we could not appreciate due to poor visibility. For the filmmaker in me, even an overcast sky is enough reason to cry. Most vistas gain a lot in visual appeal when there is sunlight to provide bright colors and strong contrasts. I can only imagine how amazing some of the places you can see right now would look in the right lighting conditions. But hey, at least there is street view to give you some sort of an idea. Permanently changing weather conditions is something you'll have to accept when traveling Ireland. And as you could see already, Olesia and I were actually fairly lucky with it. We did indeed have quite a bit of sunshine. So I'm definitely not complaining. Especially since all that rain was another chance to learn a lesson or two, or maybe even three. There is no point in getting annoyed over things you can't change. Unless you're the Chinese government that tries to send out aircrafts equipped with chemicals to get rid of some clouds, you are not able to influence outside conditions. Just deal with it. No, nay, never, no more will I play the wild rover. No, never, no more. Thank you. It will also make you realize and believe in this eternal truth that says there is no good without bad. The crap weather days were responsible for me being able to appreciate the bright ones much more. For instance, I recently spent a whole month on the small paradise-like island that is called Gran Canaria. I had nothing but sunshine down there so I automatically took it for granted and quickly every day more or less felt the same. In Ireland, however, my highs were much more intense. Absolutely. Which can only happen when there are lows as well. Or if you take drugs, admittedly. But drugs and bikes, they don't mix too well, so don't. And no, I don't intend to leave my path of being a fair weather rider. All I want to say is that the potential existence of bad weather conditions should not stop you from going anywhere. The key to be able to go with the flow here is nothing but wearing excellent waterproof gear. The third weather related lesson I can even illustrate with a nice little story. We were on our way to Galway and planned to make a stop for the most famous cliffs of the country, the Cliffs of Moher. At this point, I quickly need to apologize for my pronunciation of all the Irish places and towns and whatever. It's probably really off, so I'm, I'm sorry for that, but feel free to tell me in the comments. After our lunch stop in yet another magnificent pub, the weather became worse the closer we got to our destination. The rain was pouring down and the visibility was shite. Beforehand, when sitting in the pub, I had scouted out a neat option to see those giant rock walls away from the big crowds. But once we arrived on the small parking lot, from which a 15-minute walk would take us to the view, everything seemed pointless. Back then, my mood was as foul as the weather and that's probably why I didn't feel like filming much. But luckily we live in 2023, which allowed me to ask the power of AI, artificial intelligence, to help me with illustrating my nice little story. It went well. I even asked two random tourists, which just had arrived back from the cliffs to confirm my suspicion. Indeed, they told me that in these conditions you can't see anything. While we were hiding from the rain, I was once again rather sad, since this here was our only chance to see the country's most famous sight. But once I saw that there were slightly brighter clouds appearing from a promising direction, 
I could convince Celestia to have a go at the walk in the rain. And it was well worth it. The 15 minutes of walking were long enough for the rain clouds to disappear. We were presented with a magnificent view of the cliffs that we could share with just a few other people in that spot. I was almost moved to tears by our luck. Those rock walls weren't even my favorite ones of the trip and still the experience was by far the most intense. All down to us simply taking a shot. And that's lesson number three for you. Always go for that gamble, especially when the potential risk involved is nothing but a tiny nuisance. Just like the cliffs of Moa, those splendid coastal views are probably what Ireland is most famous for. Well, apart from this, of course. And maybe that. Or that. We simply couldn't get enough from those breathtaking vistas. Steep cliffs dropping into the wild Atlantic Ocean simply never get old. And we saw so many of those. The Kerry Cliffs, the Sleeve Leak Cliffs, Dingle Cliffs, Eckel Island Cliffs, Aran Island Cliffs and some others that I can't correctly name. I have been fortunate enough to have seen a fair share of ocean views during all of my riding so far, but the ones in Ireland, they are in a league of their own. The rough sea combined with menacing rock walls and those lush green colors, it's something else really. It is a good thing Ireland has such beautiful landscapes to offer. They are definitely reason enough to embark on such a journey. When it comes to the sheer pleasure of riding a motorcycle, however, like I said, Ireland did not make it to the top of my list. Let me explain. Some of the longer days of riding we had left me fairly exhausted in the evenings, which totally baffled me. You see, riding a motorcycle on the road feels like a routine to me. I am 100% inside my comfort zone, there is zero tension in my body and it doesn't feel tiring at all. Ireland was different though, but it wasn't the heavy bike, neither the constantly changing weather conditions. It actually took me a few days to realize what was causing my exhaustion. Blind corners, lots of them. It felt like 50% of the corners we went through were blind. On some roads, riding was a bit of a claustrophobic experience almost. As a biker, I rely on my eyes to survive. I want to see as far ahead as possible. Not being able to do so means I always have to be prepared for the unexpected since I can't see around the corner. This adds tension, both physically and mentally. And all of a sudden, riding a motorcycle becomes exhausting again. You'll also end up being stuck behind cagers for much longer than you're used to. Most of the fun roads, which means the twisty ones without much traffic, are fairly narrow as well. And while most of the Irish road surfaces offer fantastic grip, you'll often find random spots of slippery doom on the tarmac too. Honestly, what are those? Can anybody who's living and riding in Ireland explain those hellish patches to me? Simply put, Ireland is not a place to go fast. If you still insist, you'll probably end up in a fig hedge. Oncoming traffic or a sheep. My inner Austrian was screaming. After all, blocking the view with hedgerows, rock or earth walls seems nothing but an unnecessary safety hazard. In Austria and Germany, we keep the sides of our roads free from most vegetation. We try to cut down everything that's blocking the view of the road ahead, which makes riding much more pleasant in the end. But here I also have to admit that 
Personal vehicles are extremely important status symbols in the German-speaking world. Here, we basically are slaves to the mighty automotive industry and therefore make sure to make our environment as car-friendly as possible. And that's not exactly smart either. Especially since later I learned that those Irish hedgerows are somewhat of a holy thing. Not only do they keep the cattle in bay, no, those thick bushes actually are a rather important habitat for wildlife. Especially birds and insects massively appreciate the protective cover. So in most places of the island, they have decided to put nature's needs above the ones from motorists. And as much as I appreciate good visibility while riding, I certainly won't complain about something blocking my view as long as it makes those tiny small creatures fairly happy. Before you Irish motorcyclists start complaining, of course there are some roads on your lovely island without this, well, uh, visual impairment. Decent riding can indeed be found. But it absolutely does not compare to some of those European riding paradises you can find in Spain, Portugal, Italy, France, Austria, Slovenia and many other places which offer almost endless twisty road sections with great tarmac and good visibility without anyone living nearby. Many European countries offer heaven-like riding conditions. Ireland, however, does not. Still, I would never ever choose the car over the bike up there. I honestly start to feel sick when having to imagine me struggling with a four-wheeler on those narrow paths. And yet some people even call that a holiday. I also wouldn't choose a bike other than the Fat GS for this journey. Its suspension is very comfort oriented yet capable enough. Its low center of gravity massively helps with handling, which is super useful in slower sections and especially with a ton of luggage on top. Its torquey boxer engine allows you to be lazy with gear changes and yet it's also powerful enough to have some fun. Especially when going over these hilarious hoops that many Irish roads have to offer. These I would love to have in Austria as well. It's quite funny though how in the end even this not so great riding was kind of working in our favor. Because that is exactly how I realized that so far I've been doing motorcycle traveling wrong. I didn't want to spend all of our 16 days on the back of the bike. Mostly because I was traveling with Olesia and she, unlike me, is very much aware of the fact that there is more to life than motorcycles. In order to please her, I tried to incorporate some off-bike activities into our itinerary. Obviously, this felt wrong to me in the beginning. So cute! <laughs> but since riding itself wasn't that much of a thrill, it made it much easier for me to turn the motorcycling part of the trip into less of a priority. Very quickly, I started to really enjoy that concept. I realized that a bike holiday can be massively improved when there is plenty of time away from the bike. Most of my favorite Ireland memories happened on non-riding days. This probably sounds rather obvious to experienced travelers. But in my case, it took me almost 15 years and a girlfriend without a driver's license to finally realize it. To confirm, I tried the same thing a couple of months later, when I was riding Sardinia with my friends. This Italian island actually is the best place on earth to ride a road bike. And yet, even in riders paradise, this concept worked for me. I know, this very much is a matter of personal preference. It probably works so well for me because I spend a lot of time riding bikes for work. But you should still give it a try on your next trip. Variety is the spice of life, you know? And it's 
especially Ireland, has so much more to offer than just those lovely scenic roads. It's exciting and it's fun, but it's definitely not glamorous. If you, once you get off the bike and you have to walk somewhere carrying all your stuff. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, Come on, sweetie, let's go. Let's go. I can't hold the camera and the, I will just put the camera in my mouth. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I a picture of you doing that. Oh, uh, huh, huh. Show, show the good, sweetie, show the good. Show what? The, goods, the good. The, the jacket, the pants, yeah. the helmets, I don't know, the shoes. I appreciate it, sweetie. Not everyone would do this. Yeah, well, I'm a strong Ukrainian woman. A strong Ukrainian woman, that's right. You can go on a whale watching trip, for example, which is the smart way of doing a boat excursion, as we found out. Since the standard touristy boat trips cost exactly the same while lasting only half as long, they also lack those cool animals. And they won't lead you to a tiny and cute island on top of the whole trip, just to make up for the fact that there weren't any whales to see on that day. Or you could take yet another boat ride to visit the fascinating Aran Islands and attend a super informative 4x4 off-road tour that takes you to places where the other tourists can't possibly go. My favorite off-bike activity by far was this one here. Not that. I, I mean, yes, it's 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 part of it. Okay, but but I mean this. I don't understand anything about surfing, but apparently Ireland is a top location to hit some waves. The Atlantic provides plenty, and there's literally hundreds of beaches that are more or less empty most of the time. And as long as you're wrapped in neoprene, you don't even mind the crap weather that surrounds you. This only becomes an issue once the session <laughs> is over. Towel. Oh. How did you enjoy the class? Oh, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the next big thing for me after riding bikes. When there is no more petrol, we will all be surfing. Yeah. With global warming, Ireland will be a Caribbean paradise. <laughs> And of course, every single evening is an opportunity to dive into Irish pop culture. Oh, how I wish we Austrians had the same. Irish pubs in Ireland are amazing places, especially when there is live music. And even more so once we found out that there is something even better than fresh Guinness. I normally don't like going out in the evening. My insecurities prevent me from having a good time. But those pubs have such a relaxed and welcoming vibe that even I felt at home there. On top of all of that, many of the pubs have great quality food as well. And if you don't feel like having delicious pop grub, there's plenty of alternatives. Olesia is a brilliant cook and I'm, well, a brilliant eater. We always put a lot of effort, which means a thorough Google search, into finding the right places to eat. Good food is very important to us. And Ireland did not let us down. The country seems to be fairly progressive, since even in small towns you can usually find a wide variety of food options. Once we stopped at a food truck in the scenic middle of nowhere and had the most amazing seafood. Some places serve chowder so good that you'd like to take a bath in it. As much as I hate using this word, but still, Olestia and I are foodies. Except for those times when we return from riding way too late and all the places are closed, which forces us to have less exquisite options. We as foodies were very pleased with the country's offerings. Science is the most westerly bar in Europe. And that's the only time I regret being on a bike. 
can have a pint. I can. <laughs> <laughs> The only other time you might start regretting is when you receive the bill for all that lovely restaurant food you had. I'm not gonna lie, Ireland is an expensive place. But even this rather unpleasant fact presented some kind of lesson to me. I had to save money for several years before I could go for this trip. In total, we had to spend more than 5000 euros for all of it, which does not include the rental bike. It will definitely take a couple of years to pass before I can afford to go on another holiday like that. And yet, I definitely do not regret spending all that cash. Here's why. I learned from myself that spending above average money is not an issue as long as I have the feeling that I receive something of above average value in return. Which most definitely was the case for us in terms of food and accommodation. Ireland has the most amazing bed and breakfasts. You are seriously missing out when you choose a big anonymous hotel over a cozy and homely B&B. We had the most wonderful experience, especially in our temporary home in Kenmare. A place like this will surely cost you 100 euros for the night, but when looking at the value you receive in return, it turns out to be a fair price actually. The rooms are big and clean, the lady who runs the place is the most friendly soul you've ever met. You can choose out of 10 different options for breakfast that this lovely lady will freshly prepare for you. And on top of that, there is two friendly donkeys, which she keeps as pets. We actually encountered a lot of friendly animals during our journey, but those two definitely were the friendliest. Almost as friendly as this young lad here. Introducing the first alive, live shaft merchandise. Anyway, you get my point. Yes, it is an expensive island, but it does not feel like a ripoff. You pay premium, you receive premium, most of the time at least. But there was one thing for which I certainly did not want to spend any money, air. In one of the first days, we unfortunately ended up with a punctured rear tire. We even were equipped with a full tire repair kit, including compressed air. But as usual, my mental illness, I mean my totally normal level of anxiety, did not allow me to use it. I was afraid of messing it all up. Luckily, there was enough air left to safely make it to the next town to get the job done by a friendly professional. Since our GS was not equipped with a tire pressure sensor, I now had to check air from time to time to see if the plug was indeed airtight. Which meant I had to use those weird service stations. No. Lift your armpit. No. no! The ones that actually charge money for air. While at the same time they don't really seem to work that well on motorcycle tires. Most of the time I lost a massive amount of air before I could actually get a reading from the machine. Some of them asked me to apply an insane amount of pressure on the valve. Compared to Austria, where compressed air doesn't cost you anything, using those Irish counterparts was indeed a pain in the ass. Honestly, this is the worst, the worst kind of shit I've ever seen and it's the same in the whole country. When I come back to Austria, I will kiss every single gas station <laughs> for having free air and air that is actually working. This is such a f***ing rip off. During our trip, this painstaking air pump situation was basically the only thing that managed to annoy me. Apart from the fact that I waited until our very last night to finally try a hot whiskey. 
should have done that earlier. Turns out I really like hot whiskey. These two minor inconveniences being more or less the only downsides of our whole journey should tell you already how much the both of us did enjoy that trip. It was pure class. And yet I haven't even explained my own number one reason why I enjoyed this country so much. My main motivation for wanting to go back as soon as possible. I unfortunately cannot turn that one into one of those tacky life lessons for you. Instead, it just gave me a better understanding of myself. It made me realize how much I appreciate this. Sadly, I could not really film it either. I'm, I'm, I'm just not confident enough to do that. It's the Irish people. They are the main reason why I want to return to Ireland. I have never been in a place before where I met such an incredible amount of friendly and welcoming humans. Olesia and I interacted with hundreds of locals during our journey and out of those hundreds of encounters all, except for one or two maybe, were really pleasant. I remember enjoying talking to JJ, for example, a very likable guy and the captain of our whale watching vessel. He had great stories to tell. Or this lovely lad here, who gave us excellent advice for traveling Ireland's northern parts. Paul, the owner of Celtic Rider, who provided a sensational motorcycle rental experience, being welcoming, helpful and hilarious at the same time. Or this guy here who's representing all the lovely Irish people who approached and started talking to us. Seriously, the Irish are amazing. Unfortunately, I can't share most of these interactions with you, since I rarely ever film stuff away from the bike. And on top of that, I'm simply too shy to film strangers, unfortunately. But anyway, I managed to realize rather quickly that I completely underestimated how much this welcoming atmosphere is able to shift my very own mood. How I myself was suddenly able to open up and talk to strangers. I rarely do that because usually my pathological insecurities make talking to people I don't know very difficult. I'd rather not try than risking to receive a grumpy or negative response. Which unfortunately is what you almost expect when talking to strangers in my hometown of Vienna. Ireland and its friendly inhabitants, however, managed to temporarily cure some of my social anxiety. Approaching people while expecting a friendly response instead of a sour one is a game changer. It puts faith back in humanity. It made me feel better and more confident. No wonder I want to go back to Ireland as soon as possible. The weather might be rotten, the prices definitely too high, the roads kind of mediocre. As long as there is Irish people living on that island, it is a place well worth visiting. Wow! Since you are still watching at this point, you can consider yourself to be part of a really small elite. The vast majority of my subscribers is not interested in these super personal travel reports. But you apparently are. And I am massively grateful for that. Because these edits here are the ones where I pour my heart and soul into. Plus my editing and filming skills. This here is a video I actually care about a lot. So every like coming from you guys puts a smile on my face. And if you yourself ever consider going to Ireland with your partner or friends, please share this video with them. I'd be super happy to receive as much feedback as possible. All right, friends, that's it. Now we are done. Thank you so much for watching and for sharing and for commenting, of course. I see you around, servus, and as always, speed safe. <laughs>